Hello everyone, today, we are going to discuss about, the cell, and its functions, or also known as the cell physiology. Here, we present, the outline of this topic. 1. Organization of the cell. 2. Physical structure of the cell, including, cell membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum, synthesizes multiple substances in the cell, lipids, the Golgi apparatus, functions in association with, the endoplasmic reticulum. 3. Lysosomes provide, an intracellular digestive system, mitochondria release, energy in the cell, there are many, cytoplasmic structures and organelles, the nucleus acts as, a control center of the cell, and contains large amount of DNA, also called genes. 3. Functional systems of the cell, including ingestion by the cell, endocytosis, encompassing, pinocytosis, and phagocytosis. And 4. Synthesis of cellular structures. Let's start. A typical cell, including the nucleus and cytoplasm, are separated by the nuclear membrane. The cytoplasm is separated from the interstitial fluid, which surrounds the cell, by a cell membrane. The substances that make up the cell are collectively called protoplasm, which is composed mainly of Water comprises 70 to 85 percent of most cells. Electrolytes provide inorganic chemicals for cellular reactions. Some of the most important electrolytes in the cell are potassium, magnesium, phosphate, sulfate, bicarbonate, and small quantities of sodium chloride and calcium. Proteins normally constitute 10 to 20 percent of the cell mass. They can be divided into two types, structural proteins and globular or functional proteins, which are mainly enzymes. Lipids constitute about 2% of total cell mass. Among the most important lipids in the cells are phospholipids, cholesterol, triglycerides, and neutral fats. In adipocytes, that are fat cells, triglycerides may account for as much as 95% of the cell mass. Carbohydrates play a major role in the nutrition of the cell. Most human cells do not store large amounts of carbohydrates, which usually average about 1% of the total cell mass, but may be as high as 3% in muscle cells and 6% in liver cells. The small amount of carbohydrates in the cells is usually stored in the form of glycogen, an insoluble polymer of glucose. The cell is not merely a bag of fluid and chemicals, it also contains highly organized physical structures called organelles. Some of the principal organelles of the cell are cell membrane, nuclear membrane, endoplasmic reticulum or ER, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, lysosomes, and centrioles. The cell and its organelles are, surrounded by the membranes, composed of lipids and proteins. These membranes include, the cell membrane, nuclear membrane and membranes of the ER, mitochondria, lysosomes, and Golgi apparatus. They provide barriers, that prevent free movement of water, and water-soluble substances, from one cell compartment to another. Protein molecules in the membrane, often penetrate the membrane, providing pathways, to allow movement of specific substances, through the membranes.
The cell membrane is a lipid bilayer, with inserted proteins. The lipid bilayer is, composed almost entirely of, phospholipids and cholesterol. Phospholipids have a water-soluble portion, or hydrophilic portion and portion that is soluble, only in fats, or hydrophobic portion. Hydrophobic portions of the phospholipids, face each other, whereas the hydrophilic parts, face the two surfaces of the membrane, in contact with the surrounding interstitial fluid. This lipid bilayer membrane is, highly permeable to lipid-soluble substances, such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and alcohol, but it acts as a major barrier to water-soluble substances, such as ions and glucose. Floating in the lipid bilayer are proteins, most of which are glycoproteins, that are proteins combined with carbohydrates. There are two types of membrane proteins. The integral proteins, which protrude through the membrane, and the peripheral proteins, which are attached to the inner surface of the membrane, and do not penetrate. Many of the integral proteins, provide structural channels, or pores, through which water-soluble substances, especially ions, can diffuse. Other integral proteins, act as carrier proteins, for the transport of substances, sometimes against their gradients, for diffusion. Integral proteins, can also serve as, the receptors for substances, such as peptide hormones, that do not easily penetrate the cell membrane. The peripheral proteins, are normally attached to, one of the integral protein, and usually function as enzymes, that catalyze chemical reactions of the cell. The membrane carbohydrates, occur mainly in combination with proteins, and lipids in the form of glycoproteins, and glycolipids. The glycoportions of these molecules, usually protrude to, the outside of the cell. Many other carbohydrates compounds, called proteoglycans, which are mainly carbohydrate substances, bound together, by small protein cores, are loosely attached to, the outer surface. Thus the entire outer surface of the cell, often has a loose carbohydrate coat called the glycocalyx. The carbohydrates, on the outer surface of the cell, have multiple functions. They are often negatively charged, and therefore repel other molecules, negatively charged. The glycocalyx of cells, may attach to other cells, thus the cells attach to each other. Some of the carbohydrates, act as receptors, for binding hormones. The endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes multiple substances in the cell. A large network of tubules and vesicles call the endoplasmic reticulum. It penetrates almost all parts of the cytoplasm. The membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum provides an extensive surface area for the manufacture of many substances used inside the cells and released from some cells. They include proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and other structures, such as lysosomes, peroxisomes, and secretory granules. Lipids are made within the endoplasmic reticulum wall. For the synthesis of proteins, ribosomes attach to the outer surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. These function in association with messenger RNA to synthesize many proteins that then enter the Golgi apparatus, where the molecules are further modified before they are released or used in the cell. The Golgi apparatus functions in association with the endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi apparatus has membranes, similar to those of the agranular, or smooth, endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi apparatus is prominent, in secretory cells, and is located, 
on the side of the cell from which the secretory substances are extruded. Small transport vesicles, also called endoplasmic reticulum vesicles, continually pinch off from the endoplasmic reticulum and then fuse with Golgi apparatus. In this way, substances entrapped in the endoplasmic reticulum vesicles and transported from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. The substances are then processed in the Golgi apparatus to form lysosomes, secretory vesicles, and other cytoplasmic components. Lysosomes provide an intracellular digestive system. Lysosomes, which are found in great numbers in many cells, are small spherical vesicles surrounded by a membrane that contains digestive enzymes. These enzymes allow lysosomes to break down intracellular substances in structures, especially all damaged structures, food particles that have been ingested by the cell, and unwanted materials such as bacteria. Usually the membranes surrounding the lysosomes prevent the enclosed enzymes from coming in contact with other substances in the cell and therefore prevent their digestive action. When these membranes are damaged, however, the enzymes are released and split the organic substances with which they come in contact into highly diffusible substances such as amino acids and glucose. Mitochondria release energy in the cell. An adequate supply of energy must be available to fuel the chemical reactions of the cell. This is provided mainly by the chemical action of oxygen with the three types of food glucose derived from the carbohydrates, fatty acids derived from fats, and amino acids derived from proteins. After entering the cell, the foods are split into smaller molecules that, in turn, enter the mitochondria, where other enzymes remove carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions, in a process called the citric acid cycle. An oxidative enzyme system, which is also in the mitochondria, causes progressive oxidation of hydrogen atoms. The end products of the reactions of the mitochondria are water and carbon dioxide. The energy liberated is used by the mitochondria to synthesize another substance, adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is a highly reactive chemical that can diffuse throughout the cell to release its energy whenever it is needed for the performance of cell functions. Mitochondria are also self-replicative, which means that one mitochondrion can form a second one, a third one, and so on whenever there is a need in the cell for increased amounts of ATP. There are many cytoplasmic structures and organelles. There are hundreds of types of cell in the body and each has a special structure. Some cells, for example, are rigid and have large numbers of filamentous or tubular structures which are composed of fibrillar proteins. Some of the tubular structures, called microtubules, can transport substances from one area of the cell to another. One of the important functions of the cell is to secrete special substances such as digestive enzymes. Almost all of the substances are formed by the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus system, and are released into the cytoplasm, inside storage vesicles, called secretory vesicles. After a period of storage in the cell, they are expelled through the cell membrane to be used elsewhere in the body. The nucleus acts as a control center of the cell and contains large amount of DNA, also called genes. The genes determine the characteristics of the proteins of the cell including the enzymes of the cytoplasm. They also control reproduction. They first reproduce themselves through a process of mitosis in which two daughter cells are formed, each of which receives one of the two sets of genes. The nuclear membrane 
also called the nuclear envelope, separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. This structure is composed of two membranes. The outer membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum, and the space between the two nuclear membranes is also continuous with the compartment inside the endoplasmic reticulum. Both layers of the membrane are penetrated by several thousand nuclear pores, which are almost 100 nanometers in diameter. The nuclei in most cells contain one or more structures called nucleoli, which unlike many of the organelles, do not have a surrounding membrane. The nucleoli contain large amount of RNA and proteins of the type found in ribosomes. A nucleolus becomes enlarged when the cell is actively synthesizing proteins. Ribosomal RNA is stored in the nucleolus and transported through the nuclear membrane pores to the cytoplasm, where it is used to produce mature ribosomes, which play an important role in the formation of proteins. What are the functional systems of the cell? Let's discuss. The cell obtains nutrients and other substances from the surrounding fluid through the cell membrane via diffusion and active transport. Very large particles enter the cell via endocytosis, the principal forms of which are pinocytosis and phagocytosis. Pinocytosis is the ingestion of small globules of extracellular fluid, forming minute vesicles, in the cell cytoplasm. This is the only method by which large molecules such as proteins can enter the cells. These molecules usually attach to specialized receptors on the outer surface of the membrane that are concentrated in small pits, called coated pits. On the inside of the cell membrane, underneath these pits, is a latticework of fibrillar protein, called clathrin, and a contractile filament of actin and myosin. After the protein molecules bind with the receptors, the membrane invaginates, and contractile protein surround the pit, causing its border to close over the attached proteins and form a pinocytosis vesicle. Phagocytosis is the ingestion of large particles, such as bacteria, cells, and portions of degenerating tissue. The ingestion occurs much in the same way as pinocytosis, except that it involves large particles instead of molecules. Only certain cells have the ability to perform phagocytosis, notably tissue macrophages and some white blood cells. Phagocytosis is initiated when proteins or large polysaccharides on the surface of the particle bind with the receptors on the surface of the phagocyte. In the case of bacteria, these usually are attached to specific antibodies, and the antibodies, in turn, attached to the phagocyte receptors, dragging the bacteria along with them. The intermediation of antibodies is called opsonization. Here is the diagram for the comparison between the two. Pinocytic and phagocytic foreign substances are digested in the cell by lysosomes. Almost as soon as a pinocytic and phagocytic vesicle appears inside a cell, lysosomes become attached to the vesicle and empty their digestive enzymes into the vesicle. Thus, a digestive vesicle is formed, in which the enzymes begin hydrolyzing the proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and other substances in the vesicle. The products of digestion are, small molecules of amino acids, glucose, phosphate, and so on, that can diffuse through the membrane of the vesicle, into the cytoplasm. The undigested substances, called the residual body, are excreted through the cell membrane via the process of exocytosis, which is basically the opposite of endocytosis. 
How cellular structures are synthesized? Let's learn. The synthesis of most cell structures begins in the endoplasmic reticulum. Many of the products formed in the endoplasmic reticulum and then passed on to the Golgi apparatus where they are further processed before release into the cytoplasm. The granular endoplasmic reticulum, characterized by large numbers of ribosomes, attached to the outer surface, is the site of protein formation. Ribosomes synthesize the proteins, and extrude many of them, through the wall of the endoplasmic reticulum, to the interior of the endoplasmic vesicles, and tubules, called the endoplasmic matrix. When protein molecules enter the endoplasmic reticulum, enzymes in the endoplasmic reticulum wall cause rapid changes, including congregation of carbohydrates, to form glycoproteins. In addition, the proteins are often cross-linked, folded, and shortened to form more compact molecules. The endoplasmic reticulum also synthesizes lipids, especially phospholipid, and cholesterol, which are incorporated into the lipid bilayer of endoplasmic reticulum. Small endoplasmic reticulum vesicles, or transport vesicles, continually break off from the smooth reticulum. Most of these migrate rapidly to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus processes substances formed in the endoplasmic reticulum. As substances are formed in the endoplasmic reticulum, especially proteins, they are transported through the reticulum tubules toward the portions of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum that lies near the Golgi apparatus. Small transport vesicles, composed of small envelopes of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, continually break away and diffuse to the deepest layer of the Golgi apparatus. The transport vesicles instantly fuse with the Golgi apparatus and empty their contents into the vesicular spaces of Golgi apparatus. Here, most carbohydrates are added to the secretions and the endoplasmic reticular secretions are compacted. As the secretions pass toward the outermost layers of the Golgi apparatus, the compaction and processing continue. Finally small and large vesicles break away from the Golgi apparatus, carrying with them the compacted secretory substances. These substances can then diffuse throughout the cell. In a highly secretory cell, the vesicles formed by the Golgi apparatus are mainly secretory vesicles, which diffuse to the cell membrane, fuse with it, and eventually empty their substances to the exterior via a mechanism called exocytosis. Some of the vesicles made in the Golgi apparatus, however, are destined for intracellular use. For example, specialized portions of the Golgi apparatus form lysosomes, Here, we reach part 1 of our discussion. We'll continue our discussion in our next video. Thank you.